Hey guys, my name is Aaron, and I created this reel for my friend named Leo. He's the one that's cutting the hair, and Zach is my good friend too, who's in the chair. I just wanted to break down how I created this and how and everything that went into this sequence. There's a couple of things I want to get out of the way. I shot on the Lumix S5 Mark II, which I'm recording on right now with the 20 to 60 kit lens. And on top of that, we have the Black Promise 1 8 strength on it. Now let's just talk about the lighting in the room for a quick second. All we have here are just the tube lights that are on top of the mirrors of the barbers and a little bit of the overhead lights and as well as a window, some window light coming through as you can see right here. Okay, now let's just jump into the sequence itself. Okay, so right here, I wanted to choose this first shot because I wanted to establish the setting we're in, that we have the barber and the person and the client. This shot begins with a whip pan into the scene. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I added some lens distortion and I ramped in and out the effect from beginning to end. So right here, it's very strong. As you can tell with the curvature of the window, or not window, the mirror, and how that begins to smoothen out very quickly. Let me just play that again for you. Then leading out of the shot, we have another whip transition going down. And I used a blur effect in Premiere to even sell it further. But I think it would have been fine just without it, just with how fast I'm whipping the camera. And then boom, we're right into the scene of Zach getting his fade and um, already this is a lot of time has passed. Um, Leo already made some good progress with this fade and I wanted to show his skills and that's why I chose this shot. And I also didn't want to just show his skills but just him as the person and like he's the face of his own brand and so I wanted to showcase him cutting the hair more But before we move on, I want to talk about the transition we have going on right here. I got that from Motion Array. If you just look up overlays, that's how I found this one. It's one with some film artifacts mixed with like a light leak or film burn. And that paired with a, what's it called? A little sound effect in the background to give it some more impact. Here, I'll play it again for you guys from the beginning so you can see. That little click, I don't know, just give it a, a little more um, significance into the into the feeling of like hearing the sound with something happening on screen. And more about this shot right here, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's a little bit staccato, meaning I'm not following the regular 180 um, shutter angle rule. I'm breaking it. I'm closing it even more to make it the motion blur less pronounced. And the reason I did this was because I didn't want to throw in an ND filter on my camera, but I wanted to yeah, have the correct exposure. And I thought going staccato would still, would even add more to the energy of the of the whole sequence of making it more, feel more jittery, giving it more, more, more energy. And now moving on to these three clips. I was really just running and gunning around the whole um, area. It was the very first time I was in the space, very first time meeting Leo. And I just wanted to have like some consistency and some flavor, I guess, with the angles and the motion of the camera. The first shot I got was a, a pullback of him and his of the equipment he was using and the sign of the place that he was working in, the no Northern Nevada Barber Academy. And then next, just him going back to the haircut. And if you listen closely, I switch up tempos from the two beginning clips and it's going to the, the kick of the music. I think this like, just having more dynamic tempos, like variety of the pacing to the song really spices up. The, the overall sequence rather than making the same cut, same kind of cut over and over again.
And then next we have this clip of Leo pulling out the scissors. He specifically asked that I capture this because he's proud of his scissor work. And I went further and added some sound effects that you can hear in the background. You can hear like a knife being sharpened and some of the scissors being clipped. Then we, he also asked this shot for me to get some of the product that he's using, the main tame. And I used a little Gaussian blur transition in the vertical channel. Uh, just to, and I also had to reverse speed the main tame clip because it was going in the other direction at first. It was going, this clip right here is going right to left. And then to keep consistency with that shot, I had to reverse the speed to maintain that motion. Then right here, we have another overlay transition, but I switched the sound effect. I really like this one. I was just going through motion array. Is that the right word? Motion array. And I heard this sound effect and just to give it more creativity, I thought it could be used. And I think it's really good to show like the final result of the haircut, the final reveal. And there we have it. We have, then we end with a, a pull away shot. I think a pull away is the typical and the traditional way to communicate that the story is ending and it feels more cohesive, at least for me. I made sure that I got the front of the haircut and to show off the fade in the back. And if you listen closely, you can hear like his chair releasing air. It originally sounded like that, but I had to add it in a sound effect that was similar just to make it more pronounced. Overall, I took like 60 videos and you're only seeing like, I don't know, less than a quarter of them. Yeah, I was just running and gunning, trying to get different angles, trying to get what he wanted me to do and just keeping it more dynamic and like setting myself up for success while editing. Because I didn't know how this video was going to turn out. I didn't have a storyboard. I didn't have a shot list, really. I just knew that once I find a good piece of music and knew that like the type of consistency type of flavor that I was getting with like the pull away shots, the whip transitions, I knew that in the end, I can somehow pull it all together to make it happen. And that's really it. Um, this is my first real test with the Lumix S5 Mark II. I've only recorded YouTube videos or just little um, shots of the day for myself. But this is like the first time I used it for a client in a way. And I, lo I am loving the stabilization from this camera. It is like, yeah, very handy. Like typically I feel like I would have to throw on warp stabilizer in Premiere with a lot of my clips, but the stabilization out of the camera is great. Even paired with some handheld um, movement, it looks, looks smooth, looks smooth. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for being interested in this breakdown and making it to the end of the video. If you want more, please consider checking out the channel. I hope to see you in the next one. Deuces.